Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is gonna be a really casual one and everything that I'm gonna to discuss today is basically completely unplanned. So I do apologize if there's any parts of this video that maybe miss uh, context or don't go into enough depth or maybe didn't answer the question correctly. I've literally just whacked the camera on and decided to film this video because I've received a lot of comments sort of over the last two years of creating this channel just around um, acquiring Rolex watches directly from the authorised dealer. As you guys know, every single Rolex that I have ever bought, in fact, every single watch that I have ever bought, has basically come from the Rolex authorised dealer that I have used over this last couple of years since making this channel. Um, and I think that it's helpful for someone like me who's, I guess, a normal guy. I'm certainly not anyone special or of any sort of powerful influence that would mean I get access to these watches any quicker than anybody else walking in off the street. So I do think it's sort of helpful to um, give you guys a little bit of context on how I was able to get the pieces that I've been able to get. Today we're rocking the brand new VTNR, which as you guys know is super rare. Even I'm shocked that I was able to get this piece, but um, yeah, I clearly have been doing A, something right, but also B, I've... Um, I suppose, how can I say, I, I've looked after my authorised dealer as well without going above and beyond my means. Now, it's really important is that because I think we can all get into the mindset, you watch videos like this, you watch my videos where I'm collecting these pieces and you think he must be spending hundreds and thousands in his AD just to get certain watches that he wants, which is just factually not true. Now, I am going to throw in a quick disclaimer. Obviously, I'm going to be talking here from my own personal experience with my own authorised dealer in York. I cannot speak for every single Rolex authorised dealer because I've only ever used one. Um, so your experiences may be very, very different, uh, obviously, where, where your author, where your authorised dealers are um, and how they manage their stock. But I can only obviously go off the, um, the, the authorised dealer's mannerism and professionalism that they've provided to me over the years. So that's what I'm going to do today for you. So... Obviously, you guys know that I've been extremely lucky. I've had a number of GMTs and I've had a number of date justs, all of which are at the moment relatively hard to get. Um, but I think it's important that I add a little bit of context just to how I got to this position, how I was able to even be offered the first Rolex back in 2021. And yes, you can go back and watch all of my collection videos. They're all on there so that you know it's all legitimate. I suppose what we'll do is we'll go back to when I first turned 21. Um, I'd always desired um, purchasing sort of a luxury Swiss made uh, timepiece. My boss at the time, he had a Amiga Speedmaster reduced and I'll be completely honest at the time, that really didn't mean anything to me. I, I had no idea sort of, I just knew it was expensive. I want a nice watch because I'm in an office, everybody's wearing them and it'll look cool is the honest answer. Um, so. On my 21st birthday, I went to my authorised dealer and I basically went through a list of options that was affordable to me at the time. Now, my parents, they actually gave me like, I think it was £150 for my birthday towards this watch. And I put down a, a, a lump payment and then I basically did 0% finance on the remainder of the watch. And that watch is obviously my Tag Heuer. It's my first watch, still got it, still wear it um, every other day that I'm not wearing a Rolex. So it's in and out of the collection daily. Um, and I absolutely love that timepiece. It's probably the one that means the most to me, even though at the time I bought it just because I thought I want a nice watch. Obviously, as time progressed, uh, my love for timepieces grew. Um, and as my income grew and my ability to buy watches grew, um, obviously, I found myself in a position that potentially I would be able to afford a Rolex, which was always the goal for me. So being naive, I went in and put my name down for a Batgirl and sort of came away thinking, well, you'll get the call maybe in like six months or whatever, and uh, we'll, we'll buy that watch. And then, of course, nothing ever happened. Um, and I couldn't get my head around the fact that the authorised dealer had these watches saying, come in store, register. Um, but then also on the second bit, they'd be selling pre-owned versions of the watch. That really confused me. And again, this was my naivety into how the market works. Didn't know there was a grey market, never even looked. I'd always sort of just thought, if I want to buy, I'm definitely buying direct from an authorised dealer just to basically ensure it's authentic and that there's obviously no, no issues with the watch. 
So obviously time passed again. I went back in and I re-registered again for the uh, Batgirl. Now, whether I was already down on that list or whether time had passed and they'd removed me, I don't know. I'd had no spend history between those two times. So it's likely that um, I'd just been removed off the list and... Um, yeah, the, the time would come that I'd have to re-register and get some spend. So obviously now I was in a better position because obviously YouTube had started like showing these watches. There's a lot of channels dedicated to um, buying watches. One in particular that I watched was the London Watch Collector who's got an outstanding collection. Um, really, really stunning. He's managed to secure, you know, Patex, Adam Gay, which are another level above Rolex. So I thought this guy must be doing something right. So I'll just watch his channels and sort of follow what he does and then hopefully one day I get the call. So let's just fast forward a little bit. I had bought things in between that time and registering. So gifts for my birthday, uh, gifts for like family's birthdays, uh, my partner's birthday, all those little things. I would always, if they wanted jewelry, I would make sure to ring the authorized dealer and ask, do you have this in stock that they want? Can you get it? If so, can you get me it? And then obviously we'll purchase it. So um, and I would always make sure that I showed a presence um, so that they knew I was a serious person, I was a good customer, and if ever I needed anything that they had, I would be buying it. Um, so time went on, and then what happened was, sadly, my mum passed away in 2020, the back end. And again, it was sort of like a bit of a lull period. So this was when COVID was sort of like... It just kicked off in March with COVID and then obviously all this had happened. So what I'd done is I'd re rang back and been sort of like, look, it's been pretty shit. Yeah, if you've got a different type of model that I can buy, this would be great. Um, they sort of had a bit more of an in-depth conversation. We actually did it virtually because all the showrooms were closed um, and the salesman sort of just asked me about life in general. And obviously I'd mentioned the year that we'd had um, without going into too much detail, but he clearly um, understood that, you know, my story was genuine um, and a watch, and as daft as it sounds, would probably give me a day that, that would make me feel really, really good uh, in, in such difficult circumstances. So I registered for a date just 41, uh, the blue dial with the fluted bezel. And within three months of that telephone call, I received a call from uh, Mappin and Webb in York and the watch was there. They offered me it and it was sort of in this weird period that people sort of forgot in COVID where there was this period where everything sort of like dropped. All the house prices sort of stopped selling because people couldn't buy and sell property. Stock market fell out of its ass. And I assume, again, I wasn't really aware of the grey market again at this point. I had a bit more knowledge, but didn't realise how big it had gotten. Um, I assume at this point, watches just weren't selling because people sort of thought, well, it's Armageddon. It's the end of the world. I'm getting every bit of money back and I'm going to save it and I'm going to get offload anything luxury because we just don't need it if we can't go anywhere. Um, and, and I stepped in at that point. So I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that that watch was probably actually registered for somebody else who decided not to pull the trigger because of the economic circumstances that we were in. And then I stepped up, bought the watch. And I think that from that point made me a credible buyer uh, and collector, which, which obviously I am. So we got the date just, and then obviously I asked if I was still registered for the, the Batgirl, and I was, so that was great. Um, and then three months after getting the date just, I was at golf and received a call on the golf course on a Sunday, believe it or not. And I got a call from Mapping Web again, and they had advised that the Batgirl had come into the showroom and that they would like to offer me that watch if I, if I was wanting to purchase it still. And... Obviously, it's a, guys, it's, it really is quite a magical feeling because, again, that three months between was sort of when I dived deep into YouTube, learned all about how difficult it was to get these watches. Essentially impossible was the rule of thumb on YouTube. And there I was, I'd got that call after, again, very little spend history. I bought a Rolex off them um, recently and they'd offered me this watch. So, of course... As you guys know, I went and bought the watch and it was such a fantastic day. Honestly, it really is magical. I think people have to realise that the reason, um, not that not all, be all and end all, but a, a big factor of why these watches are so amazing and at least so, so amazingly sought after is because they are so hard to get. Um, you know, there's equally beautiful watches in the showroom all year round that are in stock that you could go and pick up and you don't go buy them because 
it's the thrill of be of getting something that you you never thought you would be able to obtain, and I think we all forget that. I think we think um, that the Rolex authorized dealers are the problem, that Rolex are the problem, that even the grey market's the problem. Well, actually, it's not. It's our own desires to own something that nobody else can get, and it's that very desire that obviously fuels our ambitions to buy those watches. So. Obviously, I went to go collect that. That was great. It was an amazing day. Um, came away and, to be honest, never thought I'd really get another watch. Didn't register for anything else because, um, obviously, I only want to register for stuff that I actually wanted. Um, fast forward around six to seven months. Um, I'd had, again, a really good year um, at work, probably thanks to the uh, COVID situation. And I decided to re-register for a Rolex root beer. Again, another watch that I love. As you can see, there's a theme here. I absolutely love GMTs. In fact, they're my favourite um, configuration and model of Rolex. I just think they're fantastic. So I registered again. Um, they actually had one in the showroom, which was a um, sort of like a, a piece that you can just try on. Um, so felt it, felt weight, felt amazing. Absolutely fell in love with it and put my name down for it. Um, I then went on two months later to purchase an Amiga Speedmaster on a NATO strap. Um, again, you can jump back to the video, the collection video of that. It's done really, really well. It was clearly a very popular watch, which again, it's fantastic. It's a manual wound watch, so I don't tend to wear it that often because I actually get really frustrated having to wind it, which sounds ridiculous. Um, but there's something about sticking a Rolex on and you don't have to put it on for two days and it's still ticking away. Um, but yeah, so I bought that. That was £4,000 and uh, again, was an amazing collection day. It's any watch you buy from your authorised dealer, it is always a special moment. It's really, really wonderful. So uh, purchased that and obviously just got on with the rest of the year. Um, and then in April of 2022, I purchased my partner's engagement ring as I was planning on prepare, as I was planning on proposing to her in Dubai in the June. So I basically said to the authorised dealer, look, if the ring comes in, can you just say it's a watch on the phone just because she'll probably be sat next to me. And if you say it's a watch, she'll just switch off because Laura's just, she's not bothered about watches and stuff like that. She knows I love them, but it bores the life out of her. So they rang me and they're like, oh, your watch is in. Do you want to come and collect it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, great. I'll come on Friday, da 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 And I get there on Friday and <laughs> funnily enough, the ring was there and so was the watch. So I was scrambling to move money around accounts and uh, obviously the root beer was there, which was even better because it was such an amazing surprise. So um yeah, so I bought the engagement ring and then obviously I bought the Rolex root beer as well. Um, again, fast forward from that, didn't register for anything, wasn't down on the list for anything. And it was in a strange period where uh, a lot of these sought after models, so your GMTs, your uh, Sky Dwellers, um, all of the ones that, every, that sort of were high in demand pieces, were um, the, the lists were closed, even, even for sort of long-standing customers you couldn't get your name down on them because they're just the demand was too big they had literally queues of people when you'd go collect your watch trying to register i remember being sat in there thinking this is absolutely crazy every single person you can think of is trying to register for these watches and how does a boutique that potentially only gets 15 watches i don't know i don't even know how many they get 15 a week let's say how does it even manage that wait list it's just impossible and um so yeah, so we did that um, and basically I registered for the VTNR in 2023 once that list had reopened and again, amazingly, that, that watch finally came. No, sorry, I'm skipping one, I'm skipping one. I, 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 sorry, I was registered for another watch in 2022. After I collected the root beer, I've registered for the Mint, uh, Mint Dial date just 41 on its release day. Um, I didn't actually register for this at the time because I wasn't 100% sure until I'd sort of like had a look at one and tried to get my head around it. I found it a bit odd. Um, but the Mint Dial um, Mint Dial date just is absolutely incredible and I loved it. And I, I always loved it when they had it in 31 millimeter. So I thought, do you know what? 41 millimeter, perfect men's size. So I registered for that. And then obviously that came at Christmas in December. So I purchased that. And then I registered for the VTNR in the... God, February of 2023. And again, I purchased my girlfriend some jewellery for her birthday. Just like Gucci earrings, Gucci necklace, couple hundred pound on each item. Um, nothing too high in spend. Um, 
And again, that was stuff that maybe they didn't have listed on the website, but I rang my authorised dealer and said, look, can you get this necklace in? This is the one she wants. Um, and they would source that for me and, and got it in. So again, I, I, between watches, I never really spent thousands and thousands of pounds and you certainly don't need to. The, the authorised dealer just appreciates the fact that you give them the custom. They would never ever op my authorised dealer never did, never tried to upsell me, put things on me that, um, you know, like jewellery that we didn't need or didn't want just to get a watch. They never, ever did that. And so my experience of them was was amazing. They always showed me the utmost respect and service when I would go into the showroom, even if I wasn't buying anything, just to try a couple of pieces on. Um, they really have been fantastic and, and I have absolutely no complaints. And I think what we all have to be really, really careful of is the... The assumption that the authorised dealer doesn't want to sell the items, of course they do. Let's be honest, it's a sales role. They make commission from the selling of Rolex, from other watches. If they can sell more of a product that's going to fill their pay packets, they're going to do it. But sadly, Rolex only supply so many of those watches. So they've got a wait list to manage. And you have to understand if you're somebody who's just going into that showroom and literally that is your first thing that you put your name down for, a VTNR, Batgirl, or Date Just 41, Fluted, that everybody wants, sadly you are not going to be prioritised because you haven't done anything to help that boutique. Without Rolex, that boutique basically doesn't function. Rolex is the powerhouse in those boutiques and everything else around it is what keeps the showroom open. So you have to show some loyalty by buying other items to be able to acquire the pieces that everybody else in that queue wants before you. So... I think what what this the purpose of this video is, is don't buy crazy. You don't need to buy things that you don't want. Only buy items that you want and that you need. So small birthday gifts are absolutely fine. It shows a loyalty to your authorised dealer. Buy all of your watches, whether it's Rolex, Tudor, Amiga, Tag, whatever you buy, make sure you purchase it through your authorised dealer that you are staying loyal to. If another authorised dealer has a deal on a watch that you really, really want, Ring your authorised dealer, see if they can match it. It's not insulting. You're, you're keeping the business with them and business is business. You know, you don't want to overpay for something just because you're wanting to get a Rolex. Um, but yes, that is the best advice I can give you. Purchase small items when you need them. Certainly don't buy above your means, but have a respect and understand that they have a very, very difficult job to these authorised dealers, especially ones that are acting within the rules and do it trying to do the right thing. They have plenty of clients who will buy other items before you to be able to get certain watches. So you have to show a loyalty and that is business. And one of the things I would tell you to ask yourself, what would you do if it was your business and you only get seven VTNRs in since they released? That's what I got told. They only had seven of them. How would you allocate those seven? Would it be someone who's just walked in off the street, you don't know, never bought anything and decided he wants it? Or is it going to be that customer who's maybe been with the boutique for five, six years, bought pieces in between, bought the missus's engagement ring, necklaces, all of those little bits? You know, you have to, loyalty buys loyalty. So they have to show you the respect as the same way you do them. So I think the rule of this video is, guys, don't overspend. Don't buy things you don't want just to get a watch and make sure that you show loyalty to your authorised dealer before you register for some of the bigger pieces. And that'll probably put you in the best stead possible. However, I do appreciate not author all authorised dealers are the same. Some boutiques are busier. Like if you go to London, you're going to be up against hundreds and thousands of ex you know, exclusive clients that is really going to limit your ability. So, you know, I think I found myself in a moment of time where I was just the right person at the right time, bought the right things and obviously showed loyalty to my authorised dealer, which I will completely always do. I mean, they've given me some of the best days of my life, if I'm honest. It's that exciting when you collect them that, I, you know, they're going to be doing all my wedding rings. They're going to be doing every few future birthday gift that involves jewellery or watches for me forever. My loyalty is completely tied to them, even if I never get another watch again, because they have been so, so good to me. So yeah, so that's really the, the, the main part of the video. And finally, guys, what I would say to you is obviously this the, the situation with the grey market. I mean, me personally, I've always avoided it. I've never liked the idea of purchasing a secondhand watch from a dealer who's had that watch handed to him, potentially hasn't even looked at it. There could be missing parts, there could be scratches, there could be damage, there could be unauthenticated watches. 
it, the, the risk is just way too high for me and I would much rather have the weight and the excitement of a purchase directly from Rolex where you get the full collection, the weight is part of the process, it adds to the excitement, it makes this watch more special rather than just going up the road and buying it second hand at a premium that in, in all honesty is just ridiculous to be honest. Um, so that would be my advice to you, the weight is part of the fun, um, get on the wait list, be loyal to your authorised dealer and that day will eventually come. The watch market is looking like it's in a much better place at the minute with the prices coming down. In fact, I'd like to see it drop another probably 10%. Um, but it all feeds into this same narrative. It's a very, very weird one. Oh, it's almost like when people... when. When people can't get these watches and obviously they're selling two, three times over list, everybody wants to be on that list to get on it. Well, of course they do because there's obviously going to be flippers in there. Even just people who maybe didn't want to buy a Rolex at first but thought actually it sounds a good investment if I can double my money straight out the door. Those people have disappeared now because obviously the margins are just not there. The risk is far too big for them. So this is where collectors like us can step in. We can show loyalty to our authorised dealer. Yes, there's always going to be a weight and we don't ever want to lose that because part of the weight is what makes it so attractive to have these wonderful watches. There's so many models now that are almost wait lists are non-existent but you're not going to put your name down for them because again the whole point of you wanting these watches is because you cannot get them and it's exactly the same um obviously situation with with anything that you buy that's limited ferrari do it they all do it um you can buy the the ones that everybody can get but you have to show loyalty over years to be able to get the exclusive ones that that are super rare um but yeah my advice just keep away from the gray market it's a dangerous place we've all seen what's happened with um the timepiece gentleman that we follow on youtube i mean i watch all the youtube channels I mean, his operation was just weird from the beginning, in all honesty. He's a very shady bloke. It sounds as though it's probably another bit of a publicity stunt from the way that he's re-uploading videos. But if it isn't a publicity stunt, you know, people have lost hundreds of thousands, millions in total combined on their watches by trusting second-hand sources that just... They're in it for themselves, they're not in it for anybody else and you just do not know what they're doing with those watches, where they're coming from. So my advice is keep well away from that. Um, there's a great YouTube channel that's been warning people about the grey market for years. I think he's called Optimine Watches or Time or I'll tag it here and he's called Juan. And he's called Juan and his videos are a bit wild. He talks about all of the secondary market dropping and he's predicted it for about a year now. I've watched him. He's absolutely brilliant. He's so, so good. And me as a collector, and he's clearly a collector. You can see the stack of Rolexes in the background. You know, I, I just knew he was bang on the money. He's, he really has a great way of sort of calling out these uh con artists really on the grey market and and obviously he's warned that the prices are going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping and when that happens it you know it's a bit like a cascade they just keep going and going and going until they find sort of a median balance and he, he was right from the start so if there's any channel you should follow it's probably his and i'll tag it in um i'll tag it in the description but i hope this helps it's been a pretty long video to be fair. I didn't expect it to be that long. I hope you found something uh, beneficial from this and I hope it gives you a bit of hope that these watches are obtainable to, to very normal everyday people like us. Um, if there's anything I've missed, like I say, I just, I've got no notes or anything on what to talk about. If I've missed anything, please just hit the comments and I'll try and come back to as many people as possible. Um, but again, as always, I really appreciate you watching my videos. You've all been amazing and supporting this channel and uh, Hopefully, yeah, there's been, there'll be more collections to come in the future. But for now, I'm not registered for absolutely anything. I've got the watch that I absolutely dreamed of. I've got the watches in the years before that I've dreamed of. I'm in a real happy place with my collection. The last one that I can think that I'm really desperate of getting is a Panda. But again, I'm not going to rush into that. The whole point is the weight. If it came tomorrow, I'd probably reject it because I've still got this one that I want to enjoy. And I'd rather get it in, you know, a year, two years time when, uh, when the time is right. So, yeah. Any questions, hit the comments, but thanks guys and enjoy your evening.